Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a Edwards 6616 for panel. This thing was made in 1997. 9709. What is that, ninth week of 1997? And it says, yes, yeah, September 25th, 1997, it was installed. Um... This thing we pulled out today and replaced with a autocall 4007. The reason why is it works great um, when it's cold, but once it heats up, it goes haywire. Now let's examine what we have inside of the fire alarm panel. Here is our power transformer. It steps down the 120 volts coming in to uh, 24 volts or so. That's where our batteries go. This front panel flips open in a rather shitty way this thing is definitely i guess this was their replacement for the 6500 i would say but i don't think it's quite as good it's not bad by any means better than what they make now if we examine the front here this is an interesting note these are our alarm leds here and then we have zone fault and battery fault and all of power you know the usual stuff but we have this silent test which i guess disables the notification devices and then this is our aux disconnect and then that there is drill you heard the relay on the NAC click this here it's like a multi button that does like three different things kind of interesting so what happens is once this heats up and you hit this the alarm light comes on and never resets kind of funny until it cools down like you unplug it for a while um, that's a simple, I bet you there's a bad solder joint or one of the edge connectors in the board is not fitting right. We will take a, uh, examine that and see if we can figure it out. But this here, I don't know what the heck the symbol is trying to be. This here is our, uh, troubles for each zone. So when these are illuminated, it means they're in trouble. I don't think it can monitor the enunciators. This is where the enunciators hook up. And then we have additional, uh, what are these relay connections here and here, but that's our bell circuit, and these are our zones. So you can add more zones to this thing. You can see it's only got two of the possible four cards, meaning these ones are all active, but these guys don't do anything. So this is nice because you could just put in whatever cards you want and configure it however you want. But then the problem comes in that these connectors on the board kind of suck on this back plane, so you get weird issues like this. The other thing that, that kills these is bad electrolytic capacitors. So we can slide them cards straight out there and examine it. But overall, this is quite a nice panel. I'm going to wire some devices up to it, and uh, we can give it a test. And then we will slide these guys out and see if we can't find what's wrong with the thing. All right, this box of junk right here came along with it, so let's see what we got. These are the enunciators. I think these look really nice. This is a good design. I wish Edward stuck with the same design language. These ones are LED bullet enunciators only. Whereas these have um, additional push button for lamp test. They also have a power on and um, trouble lamp. There's another one. So we have a bunch of each. And my coworker was nice enough to include the brackets for me here. Instead of throwing them out and we have lots of these old uh, smoke detectors they're quite good they are ionization detectors um this is the other style you can see that one got uh the plastic is so brittle these things just kind of degrade this one's interesting though because if we look see i got tons of these things it might just be best off recycling them uh this here interesting device see all these screw terminals that's a relay so this smoke detector base has a relay built into it which you don't see every day kind of interesting stuff um yeah i i don't i don't quite remember that they were using these maybe for something to do door holders i don't quite remember uh what exactly they were using them for it's kind of interesting you don't see that every day like especially newer stuff you don't see this very much now but that these detectors, um, they click onto those uh, relay bases, so that's kind of cool to have for the collection. This pull station has absolutely nothing to do with this system, obviously. 
I don't know how it ended up in there. I think I tossed it in there in the car. Yeah, these are pretty cool. Too bad everything's kind of yellow. I'm not sure how to fix that yellowing, but they are pretty cool smoke detectors for sure. And I don't think there's much else to note in here. Yeah, see, that's the cover from that other one, so maybe I can fix it. So let's take a let's go back to the fire alarm panel. I'm gonna hook up a pull station to it and we can put it into alarm. All right, so here we are at the panel. Wire coming to the top to the pull station. I haven't tried this yet. Let's see if it works. Sure does. Alarm lights on. Zone light is on. All right. Now what do I do? I go. Yeah, silence alarm now. So I guess that light shows you what the button is going to be doing. So the alarm is silenced now. Reset. Interesting. Now shut up, please. Thank you. But why are you on? You should, this one has to go away. This probably has an inhibit that takes a few seconds. Trouble. Shut up. Would that do it? No. That's not going to kill the inhibit, is it? No. So now, uh, yeah, I'm going to wait and see if that inhibit goes away and see if we can reset it. That's a Canadian thing. All right, no matter how long I wait or what I do, it does not reset. So let's take this apart. Let's see what's wrong with it. That door is truly a business. So I went through and yanked out a bunch of the cards. And the thing that I really don't like the look of is this resistor here you can see it got nice and hot so i should check and replace that the other thing i don't like are those two capacitors this one here it's like a relay card that capacitor is a little nasty besides that it's not. these are the enunciator cards one of which they used to do the uh, alarm lights on the front panel i'd say they're fine i'm not too worried about them there's not much to fail on here. It looks pretty plain. If anything did want go wrong here, um, I don't think this has any input, so it wouldn't affect our problem. It's got to be something is screwed up. It, this is all analog logic. This is basic old stuff, but there's, I think these um, electrolytics are bad, and that resistor is baked. In terms of these other cards, that bell card, pretty inane stuff. I'm not going to bother to take these out. I don't think the problem is going to be there. These are pretty inane. Um, yeah, no, our main issue, because especially, like I said, once it gets hot. So this is heating up, and there's something going wrong. Because this thing, you plug it in, it works well for the first, like, 10 minutes. But as soon as it gets hot, then you really start to have problems, and it goes completely haywire. This resistor is baking. For sure, this has been baking this capacitor for the last... Um, however many 25 years so that's where i would look for the problems the power supply board uh shares those same caps but i think it's a problem this logic board all right so that trace is busted right there that one's horrible see that right see that there so we're gonna fix them traces and put this thing back together and see what that does that's from the heat cycles of the thing um, warming up and cooling down. So yeah, you can see where I bridged all the broken connections. It's not exactly the most beautiful thing in the world, but it is secure and it is gonna function. So, well, I guess we're gonna find out, won't we? Let's go stick it back in the panel. All right, so I did some good old tracing out on this uh, main control card. And as it turns out, this capacitor was completely cooked. There was two of them, one here, one here. This one was bad, this one was okay, but I went ahead and replaced them both with high quality Nishikon capacitors. So basically, that's, that's what I thought in the beginning. 
but now uh, the thing should be working perfectly. This is part of the circuit that actually resets the unit. So um, I'm gonna go pop it back in and let's see if it works. So now everything's connected proper. Uh, let's go ahead and short the uh, initiating circuit and we'll see if we can make it alarm and reset. I did set it to code three. So you'll hear the relay clicking out the code. It can do code three and uh, march time code. So the light is on. Remember this wouldn't go away. Let's see if it goes away. So now it's in silence. You can hear the relay stopped. There you have it. Reset successful. All right, here we go with the pulse station. All right, code three now. Flip that boy up. That goes down there. All right. We just yank out the wire. No, the terminals on this thing aren't great. It's kind of a slow code three. There you go, I'd say that's a job well done.